So I'm Chip Yates. I'm an ex-motorcycle racer and engineer, part-time stuntman, Holy crap. daredevil, and green technology innovator, I guess. So I'm an engineer by training, and I was getting into automotive by working for McLaren, and I got several patents on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. So that really got me started in inventing things, patenting things, um, building automotive technology, and it kind of whet my appetite for how to push limits and test vehicles and stuff like that. I then got a job at Boeing, and in 2007, I decided to leave Boeing and actually changed my life to become a professional motorcycle racer. That was my goal. I started as a novice amateur in California in the Weira Road Racing Series. In 2008, I was still an amateur but considered an expert. In 19 months, I gained enough points to turn pro, but still felt completely out of place because I'm surrounded by guys that have been riding motorcycles since they were three. And my first time on a track was age 36. So it was a big difference. I started racing in the AMA, and two races into it, I got a chance to race at World Superbike level. I barely qualified. I was like two tenths of a second qualify for World Superbikes, and finished that race, and I went on to do two more AMA races, and then in Topeka, Kansas in 2009, I had a huge crash and broke my pelvis. So it was devastating, because you know, on one hand it was, hey, I just went from being Joe Blow working at a desk to being an AMA pro, to riding in World Superbikes, to crashing and breaking my pelvis, back to being Joe Blow, you know? It was kind of devastating, but it's either, you know, feel sorry for yourself or say, what opportunity does this give me? And at the time, there were some ideas for people to start an electric motorcycle racing series. It attracted me because in the AMA, I was never gonna be a top finisher. You know, I started racing, I'm 36, I don't have factory money behind me. I thought if we were competing in a new motorcycle series where innovation could actually carry the day, that's what really appealed to me was, hey man, there's no rules. You invent your own motorcycle and then you climb on it and try to win a world championship in the electric series. Here we are today. It is a beautiful Sunday while most people in church praying to God, we are here praying to the God of batteries and electrons not to kill me. And so I brought in some volunteers who I worked with at Boeing and we start brainstorming, how do we build an electric motorcycle that could really kick ass? Chip has such wild ideas of what he wants to do. This bike has to do the exact same lap time as what I was doing in the AMA. This bike has to be just as fast as a gas bike or I'm not gonna be interested in riding it. It's not gonna push technology if it's slow. For that bike, he had drawings. He had some engineers that were helping him and he would then come to us and say, hey, well, how do you think, what do you think about this? How do you think we can do that? And he would put things in our hands to try to figure out a solution, and we did. So we started building the bike in 2010 and we built this electric motorcycle from scratch to being the world's most powerful electric bike. It had 258 horsepower. If you can imagine a motorcycle that has 258 horsepower, it's more powerful than a MotoGP bike. It's more powerful than a world superbike and it made 400 foot-pounds of torque. So we finish the bike and we go to enter it in the electric racing series to show it off and they said, nope, it's too powerful, you're banned. We spent a year and all my savings building this motorcycle to race in the electric series and now all of a sudden we're told they don't want us to race. So what we did in like about two weeks time I called the head of Weira Motorcycle Road Racing, Evelyn Clark. I said, what if we bring this electric bike to a Weira gasoline expert level road race? And she said, I love it. And so we decided to enter in heavyweight twins superbike. And of course, no one knew what it was gonna do around the track. So the green flag goes and I'm last. And I beat a couple guys into the first corner. And then throughout the race, I'm just picking people off one by one. And to get up to where I finished second, in the race, that's podium, trophy, you just pass KTMs, you just pass Suzuki's, Hondas. So we recharged it as fast as we could, and then later in the afternoon, they had the other heavyweight twin super stock race. We took it out there and we came in third. So we were the first super bike to ever race against gas in a normal gas race. They didn't do anything to help us being electric. They just said, bring it and good luck. The way we invented the bike was to compete with gas bike lap times. 
And so because we were banned, it forced us to have to live up to that. The next thing we did is we entered the Mojave Mile, which is a runway in the Mojave Desert. And it's like, you have a mile to go as fast as you can from a standing start. So we took the bike out there and we went, I got up to 190 miles an hour and it was the unofficial world record at the time. And we're thinking, it goes well in a straight line and it did well beating gas bikes. So what about an outright, like risk your life road race? What about Pikes Peak International Hill Climb? It was the record for the most powerful bike ever to enter Pikes Peak in its 89 year history. No one had ever seen a 258 horsepower motorcycle on Pikes Peak. In 2011, Pikes Peak was weird. It was mostly paved, but it had 2.6 miles of dirt right in the middle of the road. You start out and you're racing on asphalt, and so I was leaning over, carrying full lean angle on my bike, and then I got to the dirt section, and I was riding the 650 pound road racing superbike in dirt, and it was the sketchiest thing I've ever done in my life. Got through the dirt, got back on the asphalt to finish the race, and ended up setting the record for the fastest electric motorcycle ever up Pikes Peak. We beat the, the fastest electric guy by four minutes. I learned it by playing a PlayStation and making pace notes like a rally car driver would. I, I memorized every corner, 156 corners, all the way up to 14,000 feet, and set the record when we got to the top and didn't die. It was the best feeling ever. After Pike's Peak, the, mem the momentum just kept building and we felt like Mojave Mile had shown us 190 miles an hour, but it was an unofficial record. We wanted to make it official. So we entered Bonneville out in the Salt Flats in Utah, and that's where everybody goes to see how fast they are. So we did a lot of research and brought on some consultants that knew about the Salt Flats, and we made a lot of changes to the bike. There was a lot of instability at 190 miles an hour, but we fixed it by extending the swing arm. So we built this 10 inch over swing arm for the bike, made a bunch of aerodynamic changes, and we took it out to Bonneville and I get on the bike, and the first run that I do, I get up to 170 miles an hour, I'm into the speed traps, and I'm tucked in there, and the chain from the electric motor explodes, and it blows the chain guard apart. The chain is spinning so fast that the O-rings that hold the grease in got too hot, and they melted, and the grease flew out of the chain, and once the grease was out, the chain seized and exploded. So we dug through our tools, and we bent the chain guard and we made up a cover out of fiberglass and we sealed it with RTV sealant and then we filled the chain guard up with oil. By doing that, the chain would run inside a bath of oil and we were hoping it would work. And so the second run I'm going and I had to lift my hand off the handlebars for a second to help push my helmet up. It induced this wobble, this high speed wobble. You could almost go off the course anywhere and not hit anything. But I go off the course and run straight into a mile marker it broke my helmet, exploded my windshield. I didn't crash, but it sent me completely off the course. We get all that sorted out. The third run, we go back out there, set our first world record. We go out and set another world record. We end up setting eight world records in a week and the Guinness Book of World Records, making nine. So even though we suffered through all these setbacks, at the end of the day, the drive to advance technology, make an electric motorcycle just as fast as a Suzuki, that those kind of things, you know, kind of burn inside you. You know, everywhere I've been and everything I've done, I've been completely out of my league <laughs> and way over my head. But that, that's what drives me. You know, he's, he's one of those guys after a while, once you get used to him, if he says he's gonna do it, he'll do it. He'll go out and do it. I sort of pull off some of this stuff and I look around and I go, did anybody notice? Uh, I'm still alive, all right, what's next? I mean, if he came to me and said, you know, I think I'm gonna try to put something uh, on the moon again, I'd probably go, okay, well, where do we start? At the end of 2011, I actually took the electric motor out of the bike because we thought, eh, we probably need this motor for something else. The obvious next step, at least it was obvious to me, was I should take to the skies. So I found a guy that had an airplane in Texas and I drove out to Texas, bought the airplane, took off the wings. He came to me and he says, I've got, I just purchased this, this airplane. You know, went out and bought it from this guy, trailer it back. He says, I want, I need an electric motor here. I need a prop here. And that's it. He didn't hand us any drawings. He says, I, I don't know how to do it, but I want you to figure it out. And we built this electric airplane. And we applied all the software 
And some of the stuff we had written for the motorcycle, all the technology from that, we moved over the airplane. We finished the airplane in two months. I got my pilot's license in the same two months, two or three days before I flew my electric airplane for the first time. And I was a test pilot. So I'm ro rolling down the runway at Inyokern Airport, which is in the California desert. It's near Mojave and China Lake. And so I'm pulling back on the stick wondering, is this thing gonna fly? I pull back and the plane flies. It just flies beautifully. And I'm <laughs> looking around like, you're kidding me. We built this electric airplane in two months and I just became a pilot like last week and this freaking thing is flying. And I do a nice landing and everything's fine. No problems at all. It flew. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. The next day, I say, you know what? Let's take it up and see how fast it's gonna go. Because the world record at the time for electric airplanes was only about 175 miles an hour. I think we can go faster than 175 miles an hour, no problem. And I point the airplane at China Lake, which is a naval weapon station, and they have radars and they're tracking me. And I go full throttle on this thing. 200 miles an hour, 201 miles an hour for 89 Charlie Yankees. And it breaks through 200 miles an hour. It's China Lake validated, they got the telemetry. This is awesome. So I shut down the throttle and I turn back towards the airport to make my landing and the throttle goes dead. And I look down and the lights are flashing on my dashboard and it's saying, you killed your battery pack, man. So I'm in the cockpit of my airplane and it, it smells like chemicals. And I'm thinking, I wonder if I'm gonna have to jump out of here and use my parachute or if I'm gonna make it back to the runway, you know? Gear down. And I've lost, uh, lost power, so I'm gonna glide it in. Watch that, I'll follow you. It was like a really bad angle. I was coming around trying to make the runway and I'm sinking like a rock. And so I'm pulling back and pulling back and pulling back on the stick trying to make the runway. And at the very last minute, I pull back so far that the wing stalls, but I'm only about a foot off the ground and it just goes plop right on the runway. Woo! Holy crap, end of current traffic. Experiment electric 89 Charlie Yankee safely on the ground. I'm rolling down the runway going, woohoo! I just set the world record and then made an emergency dead stick landing and there's not a scratch on me or the airplane. Like, that was an awesome feeling. It was almost as good as Pike's Peak. You know, at the end of the day, I would risk killing myself to set a world record, but it's not to actually have the piece of paper to hang on the wall. It's to find out what I'm capable of. And, you know, if I ever don't come back, then I have the answer. <laughs> <laughs>